Hello everyone. In this video I will be demonstrating several sections of the script commands. I will be doing so by giving an example on how to create graphs. The command sections that will be discussed in this video are the commands for creating graphs such as a command to add a data point and a command to draw a graph. Also we'll go over most of the variable commands. With these commands you can set a value for a variable increase it, decrease it, or retrieve it. We'll also learn about the commands on how to retrieve data from a tree, which you can do with commands such as get ev and get equity. And finally, we'll also learn how to make loops with commands like if, else, and go to. For this example, we'll be using the tree that's on the screen right now, where small blind shoves the top x percent of hands and folds all other hands. Big blind simply calls all hands. For the top x percent, the software uses variable 1, and for this demonstration, we'll try to figure out which value for variable 1 will give small blind the highest EV. Now, we could of course simply create a graph for this. For that, we need to set a checkpoint where we want to measure the EV, and then press the graph symbol. We'll vary variable 1 from 0 to 100 with a step of 5, and go. And I'll just skip here. And there we are. But of course this video is on scripting and I'd like to show how to accomplish the same thing with a script. So let's start by learning how to create a loop where we start variable 1 at 0 and then increase it to 100 with the step of 5. First we would need to initialize the variable at 0, then we'd increase its value by 5 and then as long as it's 100 or below we go back to line 2. So let's see how this would look in a script. Let's go into the script editing field. To set the value for a variable, we use this command. I'll just drag it into the field, and we'll need to set variable number 1 at 0. Then, to increase its value by 5, we use this instruction. Again, I'll drag it into the field, and we'll increase variable number 1 by 5. And now we need to check if variable 1 is still below 100. For that we use the if command. I'll start with the operator. You can change it by right clicking it to change its symbol. Here's at least, that's not what we're looking for. Let's right click again. No, no, no. And that's the one. And variable 1 needs to be at most 100. And now we need to set the value of this input field as variable 1. Whenever you need to retrieve the value for a variable, we use this command. And I'll drag it into the first field, and we want variable number 1. Okay, so if this is true, then we'll go to line 2 and repeat the whole process. And let's add a beep at the end of the script, so that we know that our script is done. You can edit time by double clicking it. We'll set it at 300 milliseconds. Now we have a tiny problem here. You see these two lines have a space in front of them. The fact that they have an extra space here means that this is executed when the if statement is true. However, we actually want the if statement to end here. To end an if statement, you need to use an end if statement. There. And now beep is executed if the if statement is false and we don't go back to line 2. Another way of stating this would have been to use an else statement. So that would read, if variable number 1 is at most 100, go to 2, else beep. And in this case the end if statement is placed below the else command. Let's see that in action. Let's open the script window. And let's run it. Okay, clear enough. The loop does indeed go from 0 to 100 and there's a beep at the end. Of course we still don't have a graph yet. All we're doing at this point is varying variable 1. Let's go back to the editing field. To perform an EV run I'll drag one here into line 2. And after this EV run, to make our graph, we'll need to store the EV data in memory. For that we use the graph section of the main commands. With this command, we'll add a data point to the graph. The data point needs two values, an x-value and a y-value. 
In our case, x will be variable 1. So let's drag variable 1 into the first field. And for our y value, we'll need the EV for small blinds, shove or fold decision. For this, we use the commands in the data retrieval section. And we'll need a get EV command. And I'll just drag that into the second field. And this command again needs input, namely it needs to know where in the tree the EV should be measured. When the input field reads location, it means that it needs a script checkpoint. I'll drag script point 1 into the input field. And that's it. And finally, at the end of the script, we'll use a draw graph command. If you don't do this, then nothing will happen since the script just ends. Now let's go back to L3 for a minute, because we need to set script point 1. For that, we select script point 1 in the upper right, and then we click on the decision where we want to measure the EV. And now our script point has been added to the decision. These script points can be added to decisions, but also to actions and conditions. There's a total of 8 of them available. If you need more points, just click on the plus button, and you'll get more script points. To remove a point from the bar, right-click it. Oké, okay, and if we now run our script, and I'll just skip here, and there's our graph. One final thing, you may be looking to load the tree with the highest or lowest value to the screen. The highest value here is apparently at the top 70%. To do that, use a display best tree command. It needs input, let's see what it wants with the hint system. And let's mouse over the command. Mode 0 loads the tree with the highest value for Y to the screen, mode 1 the lowest, and mode 2 clears the memory. I think we'll load the best tree to the screen, which is mode 0. And let's try that again. And I'll just skip again. So the highest value is at 70%. Let's leave the graph and recompute. And indeed, the best performing tree has now been loaded. Okay, this should be enough for demonstrating the 1D graph instructions. In this video, I have discussed the commands that are highlighted on the screen right now. Please pause the video and see for yourself if you understand all of them. In the next video, I'll explain how to create 2D graphs.